In this video, I'm going to be walking you through every single role permission in Discord, and we're basically going to be taking a look at what it does and whether or not you should be assigning it to any of your members or not, and who the role would be for, how to use it, things like that. So if you've been wondering about Discord roles and permissions and wondering what each thing does, this will break it down and be the full guide for you to figure out how to best set up your Discord roles and permissions. Now, before we take a look at the Discord permissions, I do want to say a huge shout out and thank you to our sponsor of this video, Placeit.net. Placeit has thousands of mockups and templates for stream overlays, Twitch panels, logos, merch, YouTube end screens, animations, and so much more. Once you find the template you're looking for, you can customize colors, text, and other elements to make the perfect design creation. After that, download it and it's completely yours to use however you want with full commercial license. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars on design work, you can purchase a monthly or yearly subscription to place it and get unlimited downloads. Just use my 15% off discount link in the description below. Thank you Placeit for sponsoring these videos. We absolutely love everything that you can do with Placeit and the service. If you guys need graphics, overlays, animations, all that kind of stuff, check out the link in the description of this video and uh, make sure you get yourself the 15% off of the monthly or yearly subscription. It is 100% worth it. But with that being said, let's jump in and take a look at the permissions for Discord roles. Okay, so here we are in our Discord, The Flock, and if you'd like to join, link for it down in the description of this video. We'd love to have you in our Discord with us, but let's go ahead and go up to our Discord and right-click on our Discord's uh, little icon and go down to Server Settings and then to Roles. And this is going to take you into all the roles you have set up in your Discord. If you need to know how to set up roles and how to set up a Discord and things like that, I'll pop a video at the top of this video with a uh, another video that I've done showing you how to set up a Discord. But once you get it all set up and you've got your roles done, let's go ahead and scroll down here to one of our main roles, Flock Members, and we're going to go ahead and hit Edit. And this is going to bring us into this page where we can edit the role and whatnot. We're going to go over to Permissions, and here's where we're going to take a look at all the permissions within Discord. So we're going to go line by line through each permission and then by the time we get done with this video hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what each one of these things does now i know that there's a description for each one of these permissions but sometimes it helps a little bit to have someone's input as to what that role will actually do and how you should use it within your discord Okay, so I went ahead and blew this up a little bit to make it a little bit bigger for us, but view channels is the very first permission that we're going to be taking a look at. And this is a permission that you would give a role that you want to be able to see the channels within your Discord. And it will let your role see any channels that are not private. Private channels will not be able to be viewed for a role that has this turned on unless they're on that private channels, you know, permissions list. But this is a permission that you want pretty much all of your roles to have in order to view channels within your Discord. Now the next permission we're going to take a look at is Manage Channels, and Manage Channels is a permission that you only want to give to moderators or people who are running your Discord because it literally allows them to create, edit, and delete channels within your Discord. This is a permission that does not need to be given out to anyone except for people you absolutely trust with your Discord and are a part of, you know, building the Discord with you or things like that. I don't even have any of our moderators have this ability because there's really not a reason for anyone in our Discord to have this permission turned on uh, because once I get the channels created and things like that that I like, there's not really a reason to have anybody else be able to do this uh, unless you just have channels switching all the time and things like that. It's not really necessary, so I would recommend just making this an admin only permission. Okay, manage roles. This one allows members to create new roles and edit or delete roles that are lower than their highest role. Also allows members to change permissions of individual channels that they have access to. Now manage roles is something that you could give to moderators and they would have the ability to create new roles, edit and delete roles for anyone that's underneath their Discord mod, you know, level. So they wouldn't be able to change anything above their level within the list. Uh, over here on your your you know list of roles, anything that's underneath like Discord mods, they could change all of these, but they wouldn't be able to change anything up here. So uh, this is one that you would want to give to your moderators. Maybe in my case, I actually don't have anyone with this ability other than myself, because again, 
I don't need, once I get my roles and permissions all set up, I don't need anybody else going in and changing those. If there needs to be a change made, I can do that myself as the administrator. So unless you have multiple administrators for your server, I recommend that you leave this one turned off as well. Manage emojis and stickers. This again is a moderator permission. You don't want people to have this permission because it literally allows members to add or remove custom emojis and stickers in this server. And so again, moderator only permission and really, I don't allow anybody to have this permission because again, once I get my emojis and my stickers set up, I don't need anyone changing those or swapping those out unless you are a server that just wants fresh emojis all the time. Then you might want to give a moderator or a specific role uh, this permission. But in most cases, I would recommend leaving this one off as well. View audit log is another moderator only permission. A lot of these permissions we're going through right now are going to be moderator only. Uh, this one is a good one to give to your moderators though, because this allows members to view a record of who made which changes in the server. So if you want your moderators to be able to go in and see what all has been made in the server change wise, and they want to see what you've been doing and uh, anything that you've given your moderators permission to do, then this is a good one to turn on for your mod squad. But I would not turn this on for your broader community because there's no reason for them to know this information unless you just really want them to see all the changes that have been made by everybody. View server insights is another mod only role, if anything. In fact, this actually might be one you want to reserve for yourself or the admins of your discord because uh, it allows members to view server insights, which shows data on community growth, engagement and more. And if you open this up to your broader community, it could be something that is, you know, misused in some way. And so really view server insights is something for you as the discord owner or for your moderators as well. If you want them to be able to track and keep up with those, those statistics. Manage webhooks is also something that you probably don't need to give anyone unless you're trying to set up very specific things because it allows members to create, edit, or delete webhooks within your server. Now, if you want to know more about webhooks, you're going to have to look that up because that's something that I haven't really dabbled in that much, but it's basically a way to create connections between your Discord server and different things from the internet websites or abilities that websites will give you. And so this is something that people don't really need to have the ability to do unless they're a moderator or an admin. So again, don't let this permission be turned on for anybody that's not a trusted member of your server that is working on things for your server and features and that sort of thing. Now the manage server feature right here allows members to change their server's name, switch regions and add bots to this server. This is an admin only permission. Do not turn this permission on for anyone unless they're an admin. And really in, in our case, this is a permission that only I have as the server owner and admin because I don't need anyone else doing this. If I wanna change the server name, I can do that myself. If I wanna switch regions, I can do that myself. Uh, and if I wanna add bots to our server, I can do that myself. So there's no reason to have anybody have this permission unless you really have a mod squad that's kind of running your discord for you our mod squad is fantastic but these are all very simple things i can do myself and i just don't need to have that permission out there for anyone else so keep that in mind you guys this is really an admin only permission now we're getting into membership permissions and the permissions that we just looked at were more moderator and admin. These permissions are going to be more for your broader community, but I do want to note something. If you are jumping in and you're looking at this and you're saying, well, why doesn't Eagle Garrett have any of these permissions turned on for his flock member role? That's because I do all of my roles and permissions on the channel side of things right now we're on the roles tab and if you set any of these permissions here on the roles tab it will give this role those permissions as the default permissions unless you change those permissions within a given channel but for our server it actually works better for me to give the permissions as default on the channel category side of things and then fine tune them within each channel rather than doing it here as the overall roles permissions. So you can turn them on either place, but we're just using the uh, role section here to go through the permissions. I use the actual channel permissions uh, and, and I go into each channel and set which roles have what permissions. So uh, different ways of doing it. I've got a whole video I'll pop up at the top of this video showing you how I set up my roles and my per permissions if you're interested in that. But uh, that's why nothing is turned on here. Just a little side note before we jump into the, the next segment here. 
Okay, so the first membership permission we're gonna look at is create invite. And this is literally the ability for people within the role to invite people to your Discord server. And it says allows members to invite new people to this server. So only give this to the roles within your Discord that you want to be able to reach out to other people and invite them. This might actually be better served for a more specific role in your Discord if you don't want your Discord to just be sent out to anybody and everybody. Um, but this will allow people to create that invite and invite their friends or, you know, you know, teammates or whatever into your server. The next permission is change nickname. And this is something that's going to be up to you and how you want to run your server, but it allows members to change their own nickname and custom name for just this server. And so if you want people to be able to change their name or customize their name in any way, then you can turn this on. At the same time, this can be abused. And so you have to keep that in mind, maybe play around with it. And if it starts to get abused, turn it off. But uh, it also is a fun feature if people wanna change their name depending on what's going on or the season, holidays, things like that. So change nickname is a fun one, but also one to keep an eye on for moderation purposes. Now, manage nicknames is one that you want to give to your moderating team, right? Because it allows members to change the nicknames of other members. You don't want your broader Discord community to be able to just change everybody's nicknames unless you have some kind of game you know, around that, like surrounding that. So I recommend you give this to moderators or admins only to change people's nicknames in case they you know, abuse the nickname changing system and they change it to something that is not conducive to your community, you can go in and change it to, uh, you know, something better. And if you allow your moderators to have this permission, which our moderators do, they can change people's nicknames for them, or they can change them if somebody has a nickname that's not appropriate for our server. The kick member feature is one that you need to be very careful with. And I actually did a whole video, I'll pop up at the top of this video telling you why. But basically, if you give anybody this permission right here, it will also allow that person to prune members out of your Discord, which means they can mass kick a bunch of people out of your Discord if they haven't been active within a given period of time. So right now, as it stands, it looks like a feature you would want to give your moderating squad, and that's what we've done in the past. And then a mistake was made and somebody accidentally used the prune feature to kick 6,000 people out of our Discord all in one fail swoop. Anybody who hadn't been active for six days or seven days, I think, I think it was seven days, they got kicked out of our server. And the only way for them to come back is if they rejoin our server through our link or something like that. So even though this is is something that you could give your moderators I would highly recommend you maybe not give it to anybody except for yourself and maybe an admin or two if you have some extra admins uh, because this will allow people to kick members out of your server but also gives them the ability to prune members out of your server be very careful with this permission you can actually utilize bots like Dinobot to allow your moderators to kick people without actually having to have this permission turned on and you can just turn on the permission for Dinobot which won't go in and accidentally prune a bunch of members out of your server. I recommend this being an admin or owner only permission. The next permission is ban members. And because banning members is not tied to pruning members, this is actually a safe one to give to your moderating squad. Whoever's moderating for your Discord needs to have the ability to ban people that are not adhering to your Discord server rules. So make sure you turn this on for your mods and of course any admins and yourself, you'll have it already as the owner. But uh, this is a feature that is highly recommended for moderators, but do not have it on for any other roles inside your discord moderators only or you know admins uh, if you turn this on for any other roles then it will literally give people anybody that wants to that jumps into your server the ability to start banning people and kicking people out so uh, be very careful with the band members make sure it's the moderation squad only that has this now we're getting into text channels and permissions and the first one is sending messages you have to have this one turned on if you want whichever role you're working on the permissions for to be able to send messages in a text channel so uh, allows members to send messages and text channels very simple make sure it's on everybody will need this permission if they're going to send messages within any of your server channels Send messages and threads is the same thing as sending messages, except for it is specifically targeted for threads. So if you create a thread within Discord, uh, which is a kind of a subcategory within a channel of, you know, people talking back and forth about different subjects. Uh, if you want people to be able to send messages for those threads, make sure this is turned on as well. 
Now the permission to create public threads is one that you only want to give certain roles because uh, this will give people the ability to create threads within a channel of specific discussion topics. So let's say you have a trusted group of like your your subs from Twitch or people that have you know earned a certain rank within your Discord or something like that. You could give them the ability to create public threads where they could start sub conversations within a given channel, and uh, and that would allow people to have more focused conversations and keep all of that focused conversation in one place. So turn this on uh, if you want people to have the ability, but I wouldn't give everyone the ability to do this because you don't want your Discord to just be cluttered up with a bunch of extra threads if they're not necessary. So be wise with how you do this, but it's not a you know make it or break it type of permission. So you can play around with it and allow people to have it if you want them to be able to create threads. Create private threads is the same thing as creating threads, except for it's the ability for people to create a locked private thread where only certain people have access to that thread. And so it allows members to create an invite only thread uh, if they want to have a certain group of people talking about a subject. This is something that you want to be careful with because, you know, you don't want a lot of private threads in your discord that are invite only because then it excludes a lot of your community so be wise with how you utilize this one but it is available in there in case you have you know moderators or or something going on in your server where you're going to need very specific people to be into a thread talking about something Embedding links is a permission that you want to give to your server members if you want them to be able to post a link within your server and for it to embed that link and pull in the information that that link is going out to. Now this is something you need to be careful with. I recommend giving this to some of your higher tier roles within your server as a permission. You don't want just anybody to have this permission because otherwise they can embed all kinds of stuff in your server. So be careful with it, but it is available and uh, I would recommend giving it to higher tier roles within your server so that they can embed links when they're trying to share content with people in your Discord. Attaching files is another permission that kind of like the embedding links permission you need to be careful with, but it's something that you can give to your server members if they're part of a role that has earned that ability. Uh, and then that way they can attach files to their posts and they can upload pictures or some type of download for people if they would like to let people download their most recent artwork or something like that, right? So uh, it very simply allows members to upload files or media into text channels. So turn that on for roles that you want to have this ability. Add reactions is very simply the ability for roles to add reactions to posts. So when somebody makes a post, they can add a little emoji reaction to it and start that emoji as one of the emoji reactions to that specific post. So I recommend giving this to, uh, you know, people that are in some of your more trusted roles or even to everybody. This is one of those roles that can be fun for everyone. Depending on your channel though, if it's a channel where you want to have very specific emojis as responses to a message, then you'll have to restrict this. But in general, this is a fun one for the rest of your community to be able to use. And it also encourages people when they have this ability to be able to react to different posts and, uh, you know, get a little bit of hype behind something that someone posts in your Discord. Now the use external emoji feature allows people to use emojis from other servers. If they're a member of Discord Nitro and you have this turned on, they can use emojis from other servers they're a member of in your server. So turn this on for some of your uh, more trusted roles, hired in roles, and make this one of those kind of tiers that you earn within your Discord. And then that way they can unlock all the other emojis they love to use in other Discords and utilize them in yours. Use external stickers is the same thing as use external emojis. It gives Discord Nitro members the ability to use stickers from other Discord servers in your server. So another fun little, you know, permission that you can give out when people earn a certain role or they become a part of a certain role. Uh, but something that you might not want everyone to be able to use if they're part of a Discord that has stickers that you don't want in your Discord or something, keep that in mind. But it is just a fun, uh, you know, a fun permission for people in Discord Nitro. And most Discord Nitro members care about Discord enough to utilize it the right way. The mention at everyone at here in all roles permission needs to be something that I would recommend you give higher roles in your 
you know, roles list or even just your moderation squad, because this gives people the ability to tag everyone within your server. If somebody types in at everyone before a message, it will ping everyone in your discord server that has the everyone role, which is everybody in your server. It'll ping them and pop up as a notification. This can be abused very, very, very badly. So don't give this to just anybody. Make this something that's either discord mods or, you know, if people have a very, very specific specific role within your discord and you want them to have this permission. Uh, I would not give this to everyone though and I would not give it to the, the broader community. It needs to be a very specific and kind of, you know, uh, uh, guarded role to give out. Manage messages is also a role that you would want to stick with your moderation squad on and maybe the admins uh, because it allows members to delete messages by other members or pin any message. And this is not something that everyone needs to have the ability to do, only your moderators and people that are kind of running your discord. So make sure this is not turned on unless it's for a very specific role. Manage threads is another moderation permission. It allows members to rename, delete, archive, unarchive, and turn on slow mode for threads. And so uh, they can also view private threads. This is a moderation one because otherwise people will just wreak all kinds of havoc in your discord server and be messing with your threads and stuff like that if they're trying to troll you. So make sure this is only turned on for your moderation squad. Read message history. This is an important one for everybody to have access to if you want them to see and have the ability to see all the messages within a given channel. Um, and so it allows members to read previous messages sent in a channel. If this permission is disabled, members only see messages sent when they are online and focused on that channel. So this can actually be a cool one to use in different ways because if you wanna have a channel that only has messages, uh, from people that are active in that channel, then it will keep a channel clean. And then when people jump in there, they can message back and forth. And then the next time they come back, there will not be any messages in there until they start posting messages again. So you could utilize this in, you know, different ways, like an online only chat for people that are chatting and, you know, are active at the time. Um, but also something that like, if you don't want people to see previous messages, you would set this up. So where they only see the messages once they come into the, the channel and they can't see what's been posted before. Honestly, though, in most cases, this needs to be turned on because when people jump into a, a chat channel sometimes they like to scroll and see what the conversation has been about up to that point and if this is not turned on they won't have access to that information so i recommend you turn this on for pretty much everybody in your server unless it's a private channel and then at that point you would not want to turn this on for any of the roles other than the roles that should have access to that private channel Send text to speech messages. This is a very specific permission that only needs to be given to roles that you want to have the ability to start saying things out loud in your discord. If this is turned on, then people can type in your discord a message and then it will start speaking it out loud. Now, this was something that I learned the hard way on my Twitch stream because I had this turned on for most of my channels. I was sitting in my discord while I was streaming live and some trolls decided to come into my discord and post a whole bunch of terrible things in text to speech and it started reading it out loud in the background of my stream and i had no idea what was happening for the first few seconds until i figured out that they had done this so i muted my stream i went in and i turned this off for everybody and we literally don't use this at all this is something you could utilize for a fun you know a fun type of perk in your discord but you need to be very careful with this and i recommend just leaving this off unless you have a very specific use case to have text-to-speech messages going out in your Discord server. Use application commands. Allows members to use commands from applications including slash commands and context menu commands. This is something that doesn't need to be used by everyone unless you have like for instance a bot that has a bunch of different commands that people can utilize to look up you know uh, images or fun facts or you know the stats about something uh, and you can turn this on just depending on what your channel is but this is also one of those commands or one of those permissions that I would maybe reserve for moderators or higher end roles, higher tier roles within your server. So be aware of that, but it does allow people to use slash commands that bots have now available. And so look up slash commands with bots and discord if you want to know more about that. But, uh, you know, just be kind of careful with how you utilize this particular role. 
Now we're getting into voice channel permissions. And the first one is the connect permission. And this simply, if, if it's turned on, if this permission is given to a role, lets that role connect to a voice channel unless that voice channel is set to private and only allow certain roles. And so uh, this is something that will need to be turned on for a role if you want them to be able to jump into your voice comms. So make sure everybody has this turned on either on the channel side of things or the server side of things when it comes to role permissions. The next permission is the speak permission. And the difference between connect and speak is that the connect permission allows somebody to connect to a voice channel, which means that they're their actual profile will sit into that voice channel and can listen. The speak permission though allows members to talk in voice channels. If this permission is disabled, members are default muted until somebody with the mute members permission unmutes them. And so if this is turned off, once they join that voice channel, they'll be able to hear the people that have the right permissions to speak, but they won't be able to say anything unless somebody actually clicks on their name and unmutes them. So utilize this how you see fit. If you want to have a generalized voice channel, you want people to be able to speak in there, make sure this is on. If you've got a more specific, you know, voice channel where you only want certain people to be able to speak and everyone else to listen then you can turn this off for whichever roles it is appropriate to you know not have this permission but uh, ultimately once people jump in through the connect feature this is how they're actually able to talk the video permission allows members to share their video, screen share, or stream a game in the server. And so this is something that you don't want to give to everyone unless you just want to have your server have a bunch of people sharing their live gameplay and their screens and things like this. Uh, but I would recommend making this a more reserved permission for higher roles on your list or for very specific channels where you want people to be able to share gameplay or share their screens, tutorials, things like that. So uh, be careful with this one. Um, utilize it whatever way works best for you. You can play around with it, test it out, uh, but, but be careful with that one because it is a more generalized uh, ability and you don't necessarily always want everybody to have the ability to share their screen just anytime they want. Start activities. This permission allows members to launch an activity in this server. And so this is something I recommend you keep for just your moderators. Uh, it doesn't need to be something that everybody has access to because not everybody needs to start activities within your Discord server. So keep this to a moderation team only uh, permission or even to the admins only, uh, or, or if you're the only admin to yourself, because uh, you know otherwise activities could be launched that you didn't have any idea about activity that you endorse for your server that could get into a little bit of a sticky situation so keep that in mind moderators and above use voice activity is a very important voice permission because it allows members to speak in voice channels by simply talking if this permission is disabled members are required to use push to talk good for controlling background noise or noisy members so use voice activity is something that you'll have to play around with i recommend for your generalized voice channels that you'd have this turned on for most of your uh for most of your roles because otherwise when people come into that voice channel they'll have to use push to talk and they can only talk when they're pressing a button this can be very annoying for people if they're trying to jump in and hang out with their friends and talk or communicate in a game and they don't want to constantly be holding a button down in order to speak so uh this should be on in most cases but there are some cases where you might not want people to talk all the time so for instance if you've got a large group of people all jumping in to do something in like an mmo or something like that maybe leave this on where people can talk but only when necessary but you don't want them to be talking the whole time therefore the push to talk kind of creates a little bit of a barrier to where it can keep things clean and only the you know the leaders of that voice channel will have the ability to you know talk without having to do the push to talk feature so uh cool utilization there figure out the best ways that it works for you Priority speaker is one that I actually don't use very much, but it is a cool feature depending on what types of things you're doing in your Discord. This allows members to be more easily heard in voice channels. When activated, the volume of others without this permission will be automatically lowered 
priority speaker is activated by using push to talk priority keybind. So for instance, if you want to have a voice channel where everybody can talk out loud and has permission for it, but anytime you talk, you want to bring down everybody else's volume so that your voice is the highest. That's what this is utilized for. And this can actually be a really cool feature again for, you know, guild leaders or people that are teaching, you know, a class or something like that, because this will allow people to automatically take command of the conversation and raise their voice up while everyone else is drops down anytime they're needing to say something. So this is a really cool permission. I'm actually going to play around with this myself a little bit more because we're playing New World right now in my stream and uh, Wars, this actually might be a really, really cool feature for Wars because then I can talk and let everybody know what to ha what's going on and then we can hear everybody as they communicate throughout the war until I need to, you know, give another command or something like that. So that's how you would use Priority Speaker. Mute members is a permission that you really want to give to your Discord moderators because it simply allows members to mute other members in voice channels for everyone. And this is not something you want everybody to have permissions over because then you can have one person jump in there and start muting everybody in the voice comms. And that can be very, very annoying. And so only turn this on for your moderators. That's my recommendation. Unless you have a reason, you know, you want to have mute wars or something like that in your Discord, then you could utilize it that way. But I recommend moderator only for this one. Deafen members is the same thing as mute members as far as a moderator only role. It allows members to deafen other members in voice channels, which means they won't be able to speak or hear others. This is a permission that is definitely moderator only because if you give a role this permission uh, and they're misusing it, they can start muting people and making them unable to hear what's going on or speak and nobody will know. I mean, so make sure that you've got your moderators uh, only being able to do this. Move members is another moderator permission. It allows members to move other members between voice channels that the member with the permission has access to. So moderator role can move people in and out of different voice channels, reorganize, pull people into the right channel if they're in the wrong channel, things like that. Or if somebody is misusing a channel, pull them out of that channel. But you don't need everybody else having this permission because otherwise it could get crazy if you've got that one individual that just really wants to make everybody's day frustrating. So make sure it's moderator only as well. Stage channel permissions are our next category and request to speak is the first of the stage channels. And this basically is the permission for a role to be able to request to speak during a live stage event. And in live stages, basically you have an audience and then you have people that are talking. And if somebody in the audience wants to talk and be brought into the live stage, they can raise their hand, but they have to have this permission enabled. So if you don't have this enabled for a role, those people will be able to jump into the live stage and listen, but they won't be able to request to speak. So keep that in mind as you're setting up your stage channels. This is actually an important one for everybody to have if you want to have the ability for people to, you know, raise their hand in order to be brought into a conversation. The next stage channel permission is manage events and manage events allows members to create, edit and cancel events. So this is a moderator only or even an owner only permission within your discord. Uh, depending on what you want to do with your discord, you can let the moderators have this permission and then, you know, you can give them say, you know, Hey, this is a list of things that I want to set up as events taking place in the discord. Can you set these up? And if they have this permission, they can go through and schedule them all out using the new scheduling event feature within discord. If you want to see more about that, check that video up at the top of this one, because it'll show you how to utilize the, uh, the events tab or events feature within discord. But this is the permission that is tied to that. The very last permission is the administrator permission. And this is the most important and powerful permission of all of them. Because if you give somebody this permission, this will literally grant that person full access to your discord server. Members with this permission will have every permission and will also bypass all channel specific permissions or restrictions. For example, these members would get access to all private channels. This is a dangerous permission to grant. And I'm glad they put that on there because literally if you give somebody this administrator permission, they will be able to do whatever they want in your discord server. So this is a permission that you would only give like the top level administrators in your server. If you even have one of those, nobody in my server has this administrator permission because it's not necessary at all. I would rather have more control going through these individual permissions than to give somebody this permission and then just hope that they don't 
misuse it or accidentally misuse it right and so this is one of those things that needs to be owner only uh you don't have to have this turned on as an owner you already have this but the only other time you would give this out is if you have another person who's like a co-owner of a discord channel with you then they would need to have this to be able to do anything they need to do other than that keep this turned off don't give it to mods don't give it to anybody else because nobody needs to have this ability um, unless again, like I said, they're a co-owner with you or something like that. So be wary. Administrator is a big risk. Okay. Big risk permission. It's the last one on the list. It's dangerous, but it is there. So there you have it guys discord permissions explained hopefully me going through this as a discord partner and having discord for a couple of years has given you some insight into how to set up your roles and permissions within discord that's my goal anyway if you have any questions about how to set up your permissions please feel free to leave them down in the comments of this video and if you like this video smack that thumbs up button for me so we can get this video out to more people and of course don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to know when videos like this go live because we are posting videos here on my youtube channel all the time about discord and twitch streaming and things like that speaking of twitch streaming if you'd like to join me on my twitch stream you can join us at twitch.tv slash eagle garrett and if you got any questions about discord and want to ask me live that's a great place to do it i always love talking about stuff from these videos while i'm streaming over there we play a lot of games and hang out but we also do talk a lot about this advice and these tutorials so feel free to swing by anytime you can also join our discord at discord.gg slash flock we would love to have you be a part of the community and in addition to that you can check me out on all the social medias links for everything down in the description of this video i hope it has been a help for you until the next video rock on peace out god bless and last but not least that's what you get right right in the face it actually rammed me it knows that i'm oh here we go <laughs> what a throw somebody clip that throw for me if you wouldn't mind what a throw we are uh you just call me uh like 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 eagle the 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 sheep hunter <laughs>